scrapbookers. So today we're going to be doing, um, I think this is layout number four. It might be five. I think it's four. I can't remember. <laughs> Anyways, um, it'll be in the title, but I'm making two pages um, that are all related to some older photos. And these are going into a scrapbook that I have just about summer and it's in a six by 12 format. And what I wanted to do is bring some of my family history photos into um, what's going to be mostly a current, um, you know, current celebration of summer, but it's all going in chronological order. So on this page, you, it's subtle, but I've done this thing called bracketing that I learned about at Get It Scrapped um, in, in the last ebook. Um, the, I think it was called For the Love of the Double Wide. And... What else can I tell you? I'm Katie Scott. I do a lot of scrapbooking and rambling. <laughs> um, so what, the way that when I have pages like this that are all, and I've just done them, like I've scrapbooked basically on both sides of the piece of paper. So I want these to stay all together. So I've sewed these two page protectors together. And that's a trick that I learned from Noelle Hyman, who does the paper clipping round table. Um, I think she does that. It's a good idea. <laughs> At first, when I heard her talk about it, I was like, that's just silly. But then, over the... <laughs> I've done it. Um, just because I initially thought, like, oh, they'll never get separated. But I really do. Not so much with this kind of a book. But um, with my 12 by 12 albums, I really rearrange things, you know, like fast and furious. And so it's good if something's supposed to stay together that there's that, just that extra little um, assurance that it will. So, yeah. So that just goes right into the page protector. And then I sewed it so it was right kind of along the middle so that there would be a tiny bit of a gap there just so you were, didn't feel like you were missing any of the photos just because I did them full bleed this way. So when the person looking to make sure, you know, to feel like they weren't missing part of those photos because they are small and they will get looked at because they are photographs of a scrapbook <laughs> that um, so it's like I'm scrapbooking a scrapbook but um, there's a scrapbook that I don't personally it is not in my hot little hands yet um, my aunt has it uh, but I took pictures of it last summer and it's like easily one of my favorite scrapbooks that I've ever seen in my life I just I loved it so much um, so I've been doing a lot of scrapbooking from the pictures that I printed from that scrapbook, which are just photographs of photographs. So the quality isn't even that great, but it's still like, my goal with this book is to, to show it to my sister when she arrives like in about a month or so. And so I wanna have this all done. And when she sees this, I hope it blows her mind like it blew my mind. Like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Nana lived a happy life long before she, you know, she was an old lady like when we knew her. She wasn't unhappy, but she was super happy in these photos. So that was like super cool to see. So this is going to be, this isn't how the book is going to start. I'm going to make a title page. This is something like our family summers through the years. And so it will start, you know, I'll probably have a current picture or, you know, one from the last decade of my family, my nuclear family, and then it will go into this chronology of 1942 and then 2004. So it will just go, but I will hopefully, I want to have at least like 10 different years that will be before 2000 so that you'll kind of like flip through all these sort of older pictures before you get to how we celebrate summer now. So you can kind of see like the whole then and now of it. And I love this format because it feels like 
if you just weren't that interested, you could just slip through real quick. Like, you know, the family comes over and like, come look at the scrapbooks. I feel like this is something they can just like flip through and not feel like they're going to have to sit there for 10 years with it. The only problem I have with these are that this is really sharp. And I don't want it to scratch up my dining room table, so I might, I don't know what I'm going to do about this, but I think this is a design flaw. We are memory keepers, as are these things, because they're really sharp. So I just feel like if I'm going to let people be handling these, then I'm going to have to say, oh, don't mess up the furniture with those things, which I don't really want to have to say, so I'm not sure, but I need to come up with a plan for all this sharpness. If you have an idea, let me know. Because really, like, this is so sharp that if you scraped it along some wood, I feel like it would peel the varnish of the wood up. Like, I feel like it would wreck furniture easily. <laughs> so if you have any ideas for that, let me know. But otherwise, go get your scrapbooking supplies and let's start scrapbooking. And we are celebrating summer. Um, I am working from um, my, the supplies that I got at a recent scrapbook gear sale, the where I spent 30 bucks and got a whole ton of stuff. Um, so I'm making 30 pages or 30 videos with the $30 worth of scrapbooking products. Um, not all of the videos in the series will be from this book, but I'm kind of digging, getting started on this book. I think eventually what I will do is I'll have like a little system to this and then I will video like how that system's going to go and then I'll probably just do the rest of it off camera but um, for now while I'm still kind of figuring out exactly how I want it to be and I'm figuring it out as I'm doing it, um, I'm just filming so there you go. Okay, go get your stuff. Let's start scrapbooking. Hey scrapbookers, so I, this is going to be layout number four in my series of 30 layouts with $30 worth of yard sale haul. And I will be pulling in, as I will in this video, um, a, you know, a little bit of other stuff, not a ton, um, and I'll tell you why in just a second. But this is, I've done a few layouts off camera, so I just wanted to kind of show you what this, the concept of this book is. So. Um, it's chronological and what I want to do is just go through our family summer. So I have 2004, 2007, 2011, 2014, some more from 2014. And that's just like, that's just a start. So like from when my kids were little until almost up till now, it's 2015 now, I don't have any... I need to get some pictures developed. But then what I really want to do is bring, <laughs> so we want to go, I want to go into the past with this. And um, I do want to keep kind of the same color scheme. And I have some aquas already in this, but I want to add, um, I don't think I did this one on, on the, uh, on a video, but there's some, vellum underneath there. But what I want to do and is bring the past. So we get the summer of 1942. And so what I'm going to do is I have this scrapbook that I call the century scrapbook that I haven't worked on in kind of a little while. Um, I still do a lot of um, family history scrapbooking, but I just haven't worked on that particular scrapbook in a while. And the thing that I like about it about that other scrapbook, the Century Scrapbook, which basically takes, um, it's one layout for each year from 1900 until now. And that scrapbook is in a format of 11, eight and a half by 11. And so it's just like kind of intentionally a little bit different than the rest of my scrapbooks, just like this one is a little intentionally different. And so I don't think that I'm gonna be able to do summers from 1900 until now, but I would like to do like at least 10 summers from, you know, before 2000. I think that would be cool um, because most of the summers are going to be from, you know, when my kids were born up until now. So that's like 2002 until now. So I've pulled these photos of my 
and Nana Ruby, and these are some of the most favorite photos. I just love to scrapbook um, these photos from this particular scrapbook that what belonged to um, her, and it now belongs to my aunt, but it was made for her by her sister, and so my aunt wasn't ready to give it up yet. So I've taken photos of the scrapbook, and that's what I'll be scrapbooking, but I had never seen these photos before, and I know... Like, the goal of this scrapbook is to have this done by the time my sister comes to visit. I'm not giving her the scrapbook. I just want to, like, show it to her, you know. And so it's nice to have that little deadline. But I know she hasn't seen these photos. So she's going to be super thrilled to see them, too, I think and I hope. Um, so let's get started. And so I've got six horizontal photos. And these, and four, well, three... Um, vertical and one horizontal that is just the one photo so what I'm picturing is like something like this on the first one and and then something like that on the last one and then this will be the middle filler page so let's get started okay so when I scrapbook my Nana I really enjoy using mint green. I just, I don't know, I just love it. I know it's trendy right now, but it just feels like it was, I think it was trendy then. Um, I'm not for sure. There was a sticker on there, so there's schmutz, but I'm not going to worry too much about it because, um, because I'm probably going to cover it up. The other thing I want you to know is that before I started this video, so usually I just press play and then or press record and start going. But I did look at this um, beforehand. This is um, Teresa Collins Now and Then. But it's a totally different color palette than the Teresa Collins couple of lines I've been working with. And it's not totally different, but it's pretty different. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know if I'm... Any of the backgrounds kind of for me felt like, except maybe something like that, felt a little too busy and I don't know, I just didn't, I didn't feel compelled to use it. So I'm going to put that back. Even though these are old photos, I don't think you have to use old timey motifs to scrapbook old photos. Because the thing is, is the photos are already old. <laughs> And if you, I feel like if you pair old photos with old papers, it's, it's a turnoff <laughs> for, um, you know, your family that desperately does not want to see this stuff. And so this is just like a clever little way of sneaking in some family history. So I'm going to do the thing where I scrapbook on both sides of the paper. I do that sometimes, even in 12 by 12. And so this is going to be the middle, I think. And I've cut these so they're all like 5 inches, I think. But then they had different heights depending on how much I cropped it. So they're not all going to line. It would be nice if I could line it up so the the spine of the scrapbook, would you see, would all go along the middle, but I don't think it's going to work that way. We shall see, as my grandpa used to say. I think I'm going to butt those right up to the, the middle there, and I almost think I need to do some more trimming because while these are lining up, I want some white space in between. So I'm just going to need to trim that a little bit more. Let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. And these I'm almost thinking of as like the filler pages in this little, you know, two page spread that's going to be front and back um, all about the summer 42. But what I want to do, I think, is not butt them up all the way in the middle. I think I want to do some kind of like washi tape that kind of like would almost represent 
um, would, would represent. <laughs> Let's just switch these two here. Um, like a book binding. Do you know what I mean? I think you do. Okay. So, oh, my other dilemma is I can actually, I think I can do it where the book bindings, no, I can't. Never mind. <laughs> That's, yeah. So, I could just do it all the way like this, which I do kind of like that. Okay, I think I will do it this way. And then I'm going to do something that I saw in um, Get It Scrapped in the, um, the episode. The addition, or <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I should know the name of what she calls them, and I just don't. Um, but the... So each couple of months, there's like a different tract, you know, learning tract. And so the last one was two page spreads. And so I'm going to do something that's called bracketing. And that was one of the lessons from the two page spread. And it basically is kind of the opposite of that. Like along the middle, it's going to go along the outside. So then we're bracketing in the two pages. It is a clever little technique. And so let me just, I must want to go back and look at the lesson for just a sec. And then that one didn't come out very straight. I don't know why. I'm going to cut it though. So I'm just going to go and look at that lesson so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then I'll be right back. Okay, hold on. Okay, so I looked up bracketing and the layout that I'm looking at is one by Lynn Grieverson, and um, which I'm convinced is prob she's probably related to my um, Nana Ruby because her last name was Grieve. Grieveson sounds like, you know, the same, but um, who knows? <laughs> Or uh, maybe her husband is related to my Nana. But anyways, um, what, let's see. I'm just, I'm just going to read this. So bracket the canvas with border treatments at each end of the two-page canvas. And what, so what she did was she ripped a piece of paper that kind of went underneath on this side and underneath on this side. There was a whole lot more white space on her layouts. But I'm not that concerned about white space in this book. It's really photos, photos, photos. And so this is where I might be able to kind of incorporate some of that old-timey looking paper. So I have some scraps that look old-timey to me. Now, again, these aren't... Uh, oh, those don't go all the way. That won't work. Okay, good that I tested. <laughs> um, what I think I'll do is maybe I'll just pull from that stuff I was just showing you. Okay. So even though, like, I want the book to have kind of a cohesive feel, but not feel like super matching. Um, so let's see what would be good. I want something, I like the bees. That's pretty darn cute. So the bees could be maybe on one side. That reads summer to me. And then on the other side, I don't want to get into this because it feels way too busy. Again, some of this paper, it got, I think I bent it, but it is bent, which is annoying. There's also like old timey, um, it looks like way older than <laughs> what I'm going for here. There's a wood grain, that would work. Um, but I also like this idea of the colorful flowers. And I feel like the green, I don't know if it really matches. 
Maybe I maybe I want to take a second look at this. So I'm gonna try first just to. So what Lynn did was she ripped the paper, and I think she's a digital scrapbooker, so she like digitally ripped it. I'm going to see if I can. manually rip it. So I want to rip it so that the white of the paper is showing. And then what she did on hers, it's kind of like, like this side had a bit to it that kind of went in and then the same way over here. So let's just see if I can kind of recreate that. So it's kind of going a little bit in that way. And now what I'm gonna to need to do is bump these, bump the adhesive up. It's not too hard to do. And then just slide this in. Let's see if it works. Oh my gosh, I have to use this paper on, this, at least to document a story about my dad that was actually well, I don't know if I have to document the sad story. Anyways, he was a beekeeper <laughs> um, as one of his hobbies. Now, I think I just did it too... I got it too... Um, it's more than I wanted. So instead of ripping it again, I'm just going to kind of smoosh it down there and then put it into place and then I'll just cut off the excess. I think that'll be a little bit easier. So what I mean is I'm going to just cut it this way now from the back. So it looks like this. Hmm. I like this a lot, but I do think if I use the same over here, it's going to be way too matchy. So I do think what I want to do is use like a tone on tone, but not the same exact thing. So this could work, I guess. I don't think the music works. All right, well, let's try this. Okay, here we go. Let's try the colors. If they work, great. If they don't, I'll use this back of it, which is tone on tone. That will work, I think, or one of them will. Okay. So my husband and daughter come back tomorrow. They've been gone. They left us <laughs> and went down to Key West. So on this one, what I want to happen is it's going to start out I need to rip it so it's the white shows. It's going to start out straight down here. Not that it really matters because you can't end up seeing too much of it. And then up here, just kind of, I didn't want it to go quite that right angly, but it did anyways. Oh well. Now I'm going to do the same bit. It's not a right angle, but. It's more of an angle than I intended. No big whoop. I don't think you'll even be able to see it or tell or care. <laughs> All right, well, I'm deciding if I like it. All right, I don't know. Let's just 
go like this to see if maybe, yeah, I think that's better, actually. I do. So let's go ahead and rip it this way. Now I have a ripped up piece of paper, or a couple of them. Well, You know what is so fascinating? Is that I always try to save all of my little scraps and everything. And then what happens is, I'll put them in a bin or something, and then like five years later, I'll throw them away. <laughs> so I'm really thinking that when I do these kits and do a series of layouts, I think it's like very productive. Uh, see, I still, I don't know. I think I just have to wait five years and then throw it away. Cause I was going to say what I ought to do is just throw it away right away or I give it away. But, um, do we like that? <laughs> Let's see if we like this better. Um, but see, that was my original plan to have them down the middle, um, and I could just even, but I think I like it. I do like the bracketing better. <gasps> Revolution. Um, yeah, but I've been getting, so I've been getting rid of things, right? But what I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of this piece of paper, right? <laughs> do I throw that away now or five years from now? Probably five years from now. So silly, right? Okay, I'm also thinking that I would like there to be something a little bit more along these edges, but I'm not sure what. I also am thinking I've got two boys who want to go bowling, and so I think I need to go ahead and go bowling with the boys. So this would be the... Um, And then maybe something going across here that said summer of 42. Yep, let's let's tack that down before I change my mind too much. This is my Nana and her three sisters, and then their parents are in the background. And it says, Hazel, Olive, Doris, Mabel. Oh, where's Ruby? I guess she wasn't in that one. Yeah, there were five girls. And Ruby's not, she must be taking this picture at Fredericton with mom and dad in the background. And then she ends up in this one. Mabel, Olive, Doris, and I. And what's so confusing is my great aunt Mabel made this book for my Nana, but I'm just wondering if I want to, I think I want to put this off to the side and then I'll have a, some kind of an embellishment down there. But there's going to be some kind of a band that goes this way. Anyways, when she writes I, it's Mabel writing it, but she means Ruby, my Nana. That's still, like, I still have to think about that sometimes when I'm doing these. So, yeah, then there'll be, oh, just for an example, like some kind of a, I'm not going to use that, but some kind of a band that goes across here, and then the, I think I'll, it'll be summer of 42 here some kind of embellishment there. Open it up. Um, maybe something here where there's an empty spot. And then the back is going to do probably just either. So one thing that I like about working with this kind of a different page format is that there's only so many ways you can put the things on the paper. So 
it's either going to go straight up and down, right? Or like I'm going to do them like that. Or I could kind of trim them down a little bit more and do something like that. I'm not sure yet, so I, I feel like I need to go. <laughs> but I'll be back I'm, and, and we will finish these. So there's going to be bowling. <laughs> but you won't see that. You'll just see me come back and say, no, what was I doing with these two? But that's what I'm doing so far. Okay, you'll maybe need to remind me about the band. I almost feel like I should put something there that will, that won't work, um, but that will remind me that there's supposed to be some kind of a, that even works color-wise, and yeah, so it's going to go like that. Um, that won't be it, but I'll be back. Hey scrapbookers, so we did not go bowling yet. We went kayaking instead. Um, we went over to the island. I just wanted the kids to get, to see the sun, you know. And then I turned off the internet for a little while so they would have to get off the devices. And then we tried to go bowling and it was like buy one, get one free in one hour. And so I was like, okay, we'll just come back in an hour. So. I want to. I want to finish this up and then go bowling. Okay. So I did stick this down, and what I think I want to do here is do some layers, like under. You know, like layers like that. I don't know why. I just feel like I want to. <laughs> oh, this would be perfect because it's. Well, it's not going to go the whole way, is it? I do like that though. It's really old paper. Do we like it black or white? I don't know. Maybe maybe here. Yeah. So I was thinking kind of the one thing that doing this kind of a format kind of allows you to do is to play and I was thinking that, um, you know, I'm not a real technique heavy scrapbooker, but this is the perfect time to, you know, try things, you know, when you're doing just these little layouts because it's not, um, you know, so much of a, a commitment, <laughs> a 12 by 12 page. It's less of a commitment, yes it is. So like, you know, if you've seen something that you want to try or you want to get better at something, um, this is a good time to do it. The thing that I've been a little obsessed with lately and I haven't acted upon yet is palette painting. And I, <laughs> I have this feeling that if I start doing it, then I'm going to get obsessed with it. It was something that I wanted, like I watched my grandfather do it. And then in college, I really wanted to do it, but they wouldn't let me into any art classes. I was a business major and I think it was just availability. I don't think they were trying to keep me out or anything. Maybe they were. I don't think they were. But, um... So, anyways, I, I've been, what I love, the kind of artwork that I love has gloopy painting. And what do I mean by that? I mean that there's like, you know, the, the paint is very textured. And you can see the brush strokes. And so I have a piece of canvas like up here and I want to try, but I'm, <laughs> I think I need to like get all my paints together. And also I need like a thickening medium, like a gel medium, that sort of thing. So that's kind of what I've been thinking about. I haven't been acting upon it, but it's been on my mind. I want to try that. 
And I don't know if that will really translate into scrapbooking at all. It probably won't. But I might start painting. Ugh. I know. It could happen. No, I don't want that one. They would like another... Well, maybe this one. Some kind of a border. No. Well... Actually, I don't hate that as much as I thought I would. But then I want one more so it totally overlaps. I kind of like the peach and the pink together. I didn't think I would. But I do. I like it. So we're just playing with some layers here. No big deal. But yeah, I do want, and I, I know the trend is like, everybody's doing watercolors these days, and I do want to play with that too, but I'll tell you, the, <laughs> that gloopy paint is just calling my name. I don't know why, well, I do know why, I, I, um, got this painting that, um, Sandy Genevieve, not Sandy Genevieve, Stacy Julian. Um, talked about on the paper clipping round table a couple weeks ago. I like it was her pick of the week and then I looked it up and I fell in love with it. And for a couple reasons. When when I was in college I remember going to this art show over in Tampa and there was an artist that did like gloopy paintings of cows and I wanted it so bad but I couldn't afford it. And so I thought of like on the when I heard that pit, and then I looked at the painting, and then I looked at the price, and I was like, oh, it's kind of, kind of pricey, like probably more than I would want to spend. And then I thought for a long time about um, painting it myself, and I actually saw someone on Instagram did, and then I decided, no, I really, what I really want is the painting. And so I got it, it's up, it's right behind me right now. And so as I'm on the computer here in my scrapbooking room, um, it looks down at me and I just love it. And it's, um, so it's a canvas, but they've embellished it, like hand embellished it with acrylic paint that is gloopy. And I remember listening to a TED Talk where I think they talked about like, there's this town in China where they all do this, and the, the guy was like, it's so depressing because it's art, but it's not, they're not artists, you know, they're just like, they're just doing, like, the same thing over and over again, which is a little depressing, but I still love the painting. I probably wouldn't like how it was made, but I do like it. So, am I done? I feel like I want one more, and I want it to be... Um, blue, but not quite this, maybe, I was going to say not that blue, but now that I'm thinking about it, why not? Because that just gives a little extra pizzazz, pizzazz, <laughs> just silly word. So I've had, <laughs> the cows have been on my mind, and the cow, I, I really should look up the artist that I saw when I was in college. I think it's a, it's a Florida artist, probably, I think, I don't really know for sure, but I don't want this to be so much. I want to see that tree line, but I do like the idea of this. Because it repeats the, the, what do you call it, pinked, whatever that is. And then if I do the date in the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, 
I bore myself. Um, yeah, if I do the date in the... I have some sparkly blue letters that I think will work that aren't from the yard sale, but they are um, in my stash. So most of what I'm doing in this series will be from the yard sale, but I'm not... If I know, like, oh, I've got some letter stickers that I know would be just right on this page, then I'm going to go ahead and use them and not feel bad at all. Okay, so that's like the little opener for this section. And this will be the closer. Let's see if I can. So that one. Okay. I think we can do that again on the back. So there's a little kind of consistency to it. I don't think those strips are quite 12 inches long. So on the back, it's just going to have to be a scallop. And I want this to scallop over this one, but then there'll be something else going on up here. Anyways, I have this urge to play with paint. I also don't want to get messy. <laughs> so my space isn't really a space where it's a great place to get messy. Hold on. But I actually have an outdoor space that might be a great place for me to get messy with paint, like actually painting. And I do have my grandpa's easel. So the paint, it is a call on me. It really is. So do we want the date here? No. Um, let me get those glittery stickers out, the ones I was just talking about. Okay, they're not over here. I think they're in my thickers drawer, which, no they're not. <laughs> with, what happened with my thickers drawer was it was so full, and then I kept making kits. I think it's somewhat, those stickers are somewhere. I don't know where they are. I've shoved them away somewhere. Oh well, I'm not gonna go searching for them. I'm gonna use what's close by. And these are not, I've used these a lot and I still love them. They've got a little bit of like texture to them and yeah, I just, I like them. Okay, so this was 1942, right? Yes. And this is even July, so I'm going to put, because I think this was, I don't know what was happening in, in terms of World War II at the moment, but um, my grandfather was stationed, this grandfather, Frank, who would be her husband, but I don't know exactly when they got married. I don't think they were married yet. I think they were just engaged. Um, but that's a good question. Anyways, um, it would be interesting to know what was going on in the war, you know, in July 1942. So, how am I going to... Ideally, July would take up this whole space, but I don't think it's going to. Um, and so, I'm thinking maybe a different font for... Maybe that gold font that I have been... I keep reaching for and then it's too thick. That might be the perfect thing. So this is what's kind of nice about working in a series with the same products is that then you're like, you've already, you kind of know what you're working with, you know, because it's all right there and then you've already inspected it. <laughs> like, oh, this might be too big. Well, I could always move that over a little bit. I don't want this to really go 
too far beyond that. Yep, I'm going to need to do that. Those are really easy to pull up. And they have enough stick that I don't think they're going to move around. I really like those letters. I want to say they're American Crafts, but I'm not totally for sure on that. Okay, I'm going to just move this all the way in there. So I listened to Get It Scrapped um, Office Hours today. That's always fun. I didn't have any layouts that I got critiqued, but usually I'll put one in, especially if, you know, there's not enough that day. just depends on how many people show up and submit layouts. And what that is is that the teachers from the that month at Get It Scrapped will then do one interview, but then they'll also oh, come on. Um, then they'll also do like one office hours where the students can submit layouts for critique, and it's a friendly critique. It's not like a oh that's a piece of garbage. <laughs> it's all, and the thing is, is that all of the layouts lately have been really good. I mean, I feel like everybody's skills are, you know, great. <laughs> okay, now I want some kind of like circular embellishment here. And this is what I'm looking at. And like Mabel's already sort of done the journaling for me, so I don't. And I can read it, so I don't feel like I need to do that much embellishing. What I do sort of want to tell is how are these people related to me, and that's something I might do on this last page. Let's just deal with this page first. So, yeah, I'm looking for something big and, like, circular, like a big doily or maybe these big flowers. Those would be cute. So those are definitely a possibility. I've got some more flowers down here. Oh, these are... Let's pull these out of the... sleeve here. I think these colors match better because they're the same manufacturer. This is my mind's eye and this is Teresa Collins. So let's go, let's just stick with Teresa Collins. Where did my other, there we go. Okay. Nope. <laughs> so I kind of want to cover this up and I want to, but I, I don't like that at all. So I'm going to put, since I've gotten it off of that, whatever you call it, sheet, I'm putting the loose pieces in here. So I could kind of look in here. That might be a good idea. I could use, I could use this. And then that kind of explains, you know, that would provide me with a place for journaling, but I don't really like that. Um, let's see what else we've got. This is a big journaling spot, but it's, it's chipboard and I feel like it's too, it's too much. Oh, this might be good. This one right here. Okay. I like all of those. see what else. No, nope, those are too wedding-y, wedding-ish, wedding-oriented. Um, okay, let's try this one. 
here. I don't know why I like that, but I think I do. I guess because it looks kind of old fashioned y. I feel like it's not really contrasty enough with all of that stuff there. But for whatever reason, I like it anyways. <laughs> oh, and so because this is not, all right, I, I don't want to stick it through because, um, because, 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 do I like it? Um, do I like it? I don't know. I just talked myself talk myself into it and then I just think I talked myself out of it. Blech. So you kind of envision like a little brad up there and a little brad down there. Alright, let's try the one that's this family. I like that. on the fence about this one down here and I got the same problem with the brad up here so I'm just gonna bend both of the brad thingies um, prongs down and then yeah I think that will work and then when I adhere it down it's gonna naturally like get taped do I like this? No. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, I do like the idea of something being up there, but I'm not sure I actually want anything up there. Hmm. Okay, I have these. I like these. It's really like Julia Child when I say that. I do. I like hats. I do. She's like. You like bridge? I do. But it was boring. It's from that movie, Jules. Julia and Julia. All right, I don't know. Blah. These label stickers by October Afternoon in licorice. I really like the idea of them. But I don't think I actually like them on this page. Maybe on the back. Oh, why do I like that there? It's, is it good? Sometimes I wish you could, you could say like, yes, put it there, it looks great, and stop worrying about it. Or you could say, no, it looks like garbage. <laughs> that would be helpful. Oh, I found some, these are nice. Okay, these came with the, the, um, the yard sale stuff. 13 stickers from Memory Makers. See, getting them out. So I think I what I like the idea of doing is layering like this. Yes. So let me. Which one I like better? I think this one. The other one I think is a little bit bigger, so it's going to show up a little bit better. I really like these stickers though. 
so cute. Oh, I'm talking too long. Okay, I like that too. And I'm just going to go, I'm just going to stick it down. <laughs> yes, I am. Okay. Why do I like that? I have no idea. I just do. Um, so that's what it looks like. I don't know. It just looks like, you know, that generation. You know, they wore those pins that were so dimensional and enameled and doilies. <laughs> I don't know. That just makes me... I'm sorry. We're getting a lot of glare, aren't we? Sorry about that. Not a lot I'm going to do about it right now. But that's the title page. Okay, I need to pause. Hold on. Okay. And now I'm back. And then here's the middle. I haven't decided if I'm going to do much else with this. Hmm. I think what I kind of am leaning towards in the middle here is... Not a ton, but maybe just like one sticker here, if I could figure out something small that was appropriate, or some kind of like um, washi that goes up and down there. You just see what some of these little words say. And these are a little bit harder to read. This is still 42. So, okay. I almost want to put a little 42 right there in a color. Yeah, this is all 42. Because not the entire scrapbook isn't for all 42, but these pictures are. So... That 42, I would like to be, like, not in a square, and it would be cool if these were tiny or smaller. I would use those, but they're not. Uh, or if something said, like, memories, or I like that documented. That's pretty cool. Let's see if that works, because all of these were documented by Green Out Mabel. She was cool. But where could that fit? And she was somebody I didn't really know. You know, I wish I knew her better. She seemed like a super cool lady. I don't really want to put this on its side. I would like it to go this way. Maybe in the end, the documented could go something like this. Or... I don't know, on the back. I like that idea, because then I can write about how it was documented by Mabel. But I want a 42 for right here. Like a chipboard letter that is a shape and is kind of colorful, like pink. I would like it to be a pink. How's that for, for specific? At least I know what I want, right? Now I know I'm not using all of these things. I should be. I will. And this kind of an album, you know, is the kind where you can go back and like add things in where it seems sparse. Alright, I'm not finding it. I'm going to look. Where am I going to look? <laughs> I'm going to look at all the letter stickers that I got at the yard sale first to see if I can find something. Oh, those are cute. but not exactly what I need. That, that would be the right color, but there's no letters there. Grr. I hate it when that happens. And then, blah. 
got a lot of rub-ons, which I don't think are going to work. And I don't think I'm going to find something in this little stash. So I'm just going to... Oh, I haven't even dug into any of this yet. You know, it'd be really cute is like some kind of a little, like if there was one of these bingo things with 42 on it, that would be perfect. But I don't see that there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've got, <laughs> I've got lots and lots of things here that aren't, I haven't even really looked at yet. So much stuff. More, 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 more. Um, even a lollipop. Okay, so none of that is floating my boat. So I'm going to choose, what am I going to do? I have a chipboard embellishment drawer that I like literally never go to. Looks like this. Um, no doubt I will not use anything from here. There's some chipboard letters, but they're too large. Time spent with friends is time well spent. Okay. Now there's... Nope. work. Maybe. If it's small enough. I'm not sure what it is. So I have one drawer. I have one set of drawers for thickers and then I have another drawer that is just for flat letter stickers. So I'm looking in there now and it's pretty well organized by color. So I'm looking for 42. There's a 42. It's a little brighter than I anticipated. Oh, here's better. That may work better. Not really the look I was going for, but I think it could work. Let's see if this one works first. I feel like it's going to be too big, but I like that it's, yeah, I like I like that it's dimensional. It seems like it should be sitting on something. Like some kind of a circle, you know. Like a burst of some sort, but not another piece of chipboard. I don't want it to be that lumpy. I would just like a little sticker. Oh, how about this? Yeah. That one could work or this one would use the blue as well. I hope that's not too big. I think that'll work. Just right here. Ta-da. I know that doesn't look like enough contrast from where you're sitting, but it does for me, although I could beef it up a little, but it really, it looks fine. I like that it's a little soft. Um, I'm going to be good with this one, I think with just that. And now for the back, I want to have another something here. Another um, border strip sort of thing. Oh, 
These drive me crazy because they're not, they're not always long enough. So I'm just looking through all that pile of scraps. <laughs> pile of garbage now. This is, um, that would kind of tie it in with the front, but then I feel like it needs one more something. Yeah, pink would be good, I think. So I kind of want to have like that whole, almost like a wedding, you know, <laughs> you want all of your, you pick a color scheme and then you want it to go throughout. Um, so this whole, I want this whole album to kind of look not like it's completely matched, but that there is kind of a an overarching something. You know? <laughs> I think this would work actually. That just a little strip. just to bring in that color again. That was a mistake. <laughs> okay. So what have you been up to this summer? <laughs> you just leave me a comment and tell me because you can't answer. Well, you can, but I won't hear you. Um, what have you been up to? Do you get more done in the summer months, scrapbooking-wise, or less done? Or how does that work for you? So sometimes I feel like I get more done in the summer. Not every time. It really depends... It's, it, like, it changes. Every time your kids change, like, <laughs> the amount of time I have to do this hobby and the motivation I have for it, too, changes. Um, when they were little, you know, you feel like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to miss anything. I want to capture everything. And now, like, the changes have s slowed down. Um, so I don't feel that urgency that I did. <laughs> You know, it's just a little different. All right, so I wanna, I really liked this document in here, I think. Like there, or up here. I kind of don't want to mess with the picture part of it. I'm gonna put it down here. Even though it feels like it's floating a little bit. Oh well. And now I want to tell the story about how Mabel put this together, and also like, who the heck is this? And so I'd like to have some kind of a journaling thing here and here because I'm not um, very confident in writing on this shiny cardstock. So, haha, -ha, happen to have some journaling things. <laughs> and I've, I had these already, but I don't know if you've seen that video that I made. Um, about how it came to be that I have all this stuff. Um, ooh, I like that. It's a little large, but I do like it. But I, you won't be able to see the whole effect of it.
Slanches. I just want to make sure you can see everything, you know. Maybe I'll just use like two sides of the same thing. Will that work? I don't know if it will. I probably don't need to do that, but I like how this is notes. But I also like that whole color. Um, I like how all those colors look together. Maybe I could do it like this. forget what I was asking you about. Asking you about that you can't answer. <laughs> okay, there's one way. That's one option. No, I don't like that. I do like it this way though. Why is there a difference? I don't know. Just like it one way and not the other. So we are going to lose that part of it. I'm kind of okay with that. Although I do think it's pretty cute. And if I can incorporate it down here on the bottom. Oh, maybe I could do it like. Maybe I could go over here. No. That looks like garbage. And this is not going to be big enough. But this could be. Okay, these are just one sided. Good to know. This is kind of cute because it's got the arrows. So, you know, what's so interesting is that when my dad's cousin contacted me and, like, oh, hadn't, so she would be, like, her husband's little sister's daughter, which would mean that's my dad's cousin, his first cousin. Anyway, she... I didn't really ever really know her, but I've known her like sort of on Facebook for the last, I don't know, year or so, but we've never like, ooh, that one's cute. Um, we've never talked a ton, so I didn't, I still feel like I didn't really know her, you know, but then we talked on the phone and that was so cool. And, um, she, so my dad had an older brother and this cousin, this first cousin, her parents got divorced. And so she ended up spending a lot of time at my big nan. So this is my little nana. <laughs> my, her husband's mother I called big nana. Yeah, she was. <laughs> it's so weird, but like that's what we all called her. But she was heavy. Um, but. Anyways, Big Nana was like, apparently, like, I have vague memories of her, um, but my Aunt Carolyn, my dad's sister, and then this cousin, Marsha, had, like, nothing but, like, oh, they, like, Big Nana was the sweetest lady that ever lived. And so I've made some pages about her. Not a ton of pages, um, but I have made some. I'll have to, I want to do more about her. And feel like I could, because she told me all this stuff about her that I didn't know at all. And about my dad that, like, kind of confirmed some things, you know. You know when you're a kid and you're growing up and you, you know, you just don't get the whole scoop on things. Or, like, you kind of, like, have some inklings about different things. But nobody really confirms anything. 
well, <laughs> she told me a bunch of things and I was like, yep, that sounds right. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's, I don't think you're alone in that feeling. And so that was pretty interesting. Um, just some, you know, different impressions about different family members that, um, you know, I always thought that one wasn't so great. And she was like, that one's not so great. And um, yeah, I'm like, well, I don't think you're alone in that opinion. <laughs> kind of, you know, I didn't know her well, so I didn't know, like, how much trash talk I could talk with her, you know. You kind of have to <laughs> figure that out. But she seemed like, everything she said, I was like, yep, that sounds totally accurate. And so that was cool that this lady that I've never spoken with, um, you know, knew all the people I knew and had really the same impressions about a lot of people that I did. You know, like, this one was great, that one was not so great <laughs> in families. You know, we, you know, I'm sure you know. So, that was interesting. And what's really weird is she, um, so her mother, who would be like, my great aunt, so my great aunt Ethel, her, um, anyways, she and her husband got divorced, I guess, and then, like, they came down, like, either, I don't know, I think the cousin came down to live here with her dad, but then the dad, who was, like, the ex-husband, still got along with Big Nana, so Big Nana used to come down and she was here. Like, the lady that I talked to on the phone graduated from high school in my town, where I live now in Florida, and we're from Maine, and I didn't know that. And then um, my big Nana used to come down here to Madeira Beach, which is like, you know, 10 minutes from here. And I didn't know that either. So, more weirdness. All of my, both sides of my family, used to, I guess it's not that unusual that people come to Florida on vacation, but think it's unusual that it came like specifically here and this is where I I you know ended up it's weird it's cool but it's weird okay I'm gonna write some notes and then I'll be right back okay so I think this is gonna be done um so this says this is my Nana this is mine I've even put my name Katie Nana and in parentheses grandmother Ruby Grieve um do you see that? I don't know if you can. I'm trying to read it to you. But um, when she was in college at Mount Allison in New Brunswick, Canada, I know she met my grandpa Frank Fenderson during this time, but I think they got married after World War II. So, you know, it's the summer of 42, a reference World War II, which was something going on at the time. And then down here, my great aunt Mabel Grieve made this scrapbook as a birthday present for her sister slash my Nana Ruby. Ruby is on the far left. There she is. And I think Mabel is right next to her. And yeah, that's all. So what, what's going to happen is these are going to go into two page protectors and then those page protectors will get sewed together. So maybe I'll show you that in the intro. Okay, thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.